Disney is in trouble after their streaming service lost 4 million subscribers in one quarter, and they don't seem to have any idea what to do about it. Now this is also the second quarter in a row where they've lost subscribers. The first time was 2.4 million subscribers, which prompted them to lay off 7,000 employees, and now we've about doubled that at over 4 million. So we're not just continuously losing people, it's accelerating. Now the majority of the subscribers that were lost were from India at 4.6 million, but there were still 300,000 subscriptions that were lost in the United States and Canada. And it's worth noting that while these subscriptions are significantly less than the total number in India, the price of the most expensive subscription in India is 1500 per year, but that converts to around $18 a year. So while the number of subscriptions is very different, the total revenue loss between them actually isn't that different. But we've got to ask why is this happening? Why are so many people unsubscribing from Disney Plus? I mean, with the quality of the content alone, surely people must be flocking to the service. I mean, even just the shows I've watched on Disney Plus, how can this not be a successful service? We had Willow. A mother gives birth. Her body makes milk for the child. Stop, please stop. It's nourishment. It's the part of himself that he gives to us. Obi-Wan can blow me. Almost there. And my personal favorite, She-Hulk. There's a hot chick over there. I'm gonna go talk to it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sad and I'm lonely. I mean, with such quality programming, is it any wonder that Bob Iger has no idea what's going on, what the problem is, or how to fix it? I mean, yes, their stock price did plummet after they announced that they'd lost subscribers, because not only did they lose tons of subscribers, they were actually projected to gain 2 million subscribers. So the gap between expectation and reality widened even further. This led to their stock price getting smashed by 9% in one day, down to $92 a share from a 52-week high of $126. And you know your company is in trouble, where you're going, well, I mean, we narrowed how much money we lost by $400 million. Not that we stopped losing money, no, we just narrowed how much money we're losing constantly. Because in this most recent quarter, they were losing $4 million a day. And you only have to look at a chart of who owns consumer spending debt to realize maybe the force is female after all. Because it was it wasn't just the fact that Disney's stock fell by 9%. It actually crashed so hard that it dragged down the Dow overall. You don't need a degree in mathematics to understand the big vertical line is a bad thing. But you've got a very obvious problem of people fleeing your streaming service, and people have been telling you why for years. So what you have to do about it is very obvious, unless you're Bob Iger. Because good old Bob has a different plan in mind, yeah? He's going to start merging Disney Plus and Hulu so that people get a one-app experience, and then he's going to increase the price for Disney Plus as well. Here's the questionable choices. People are fleeing our platform in hundreds of thousands because they don't like the content we're producing. We should probably just charge the people who are staying more money to make up for it. How is that a plan? What should we do, Bob? Uh, just take advantage of the easily pleased. That'll make it better. I mean, he does say that Disney Plus will soon include more general entertainment content. Who knows, maybe a show like MILF Manor will be coming to a screen near you soon. But he wants to increase the price of regular Disney Plus, not, apparently, to make up for all the people fleeing the platform. That would probably be bad PR. No, he says it's to widen the delta between the ad-supported plan and the ad-free plan. Apparently, this was already done in December by $3, and they're just gonna do it again. Normally, platforms release an ad-supported plan to actually give a cheaper option for people to enter on to increase your subscriber base overall, but it seems that Disney just put ads on their normal one and made a higher version without it. Who knows, if subscribers continue to flee, maybe they'll just make it 100 bucks a month. This is what happens when a company gets loyal customers who are willing to just pay anything. They've already seen it in the parks. They can charge literally anything for food and people just keep going and just keep paying for it. And they seem to think they can do it with streaming as well. Let's see if that one pans out. Because the previous CEO said he kept increasing the price of the parks so that less people went so it was a better experience for those that are there. But in digital terms, no, uh, we plan to increase the price to better reflect the value of our content offerings, which would imply the content was actually good. Go ahead, kid. Fetch me some brine possum butter. Sprinkle it on my bum and make my gentle wind smell like cinnamon. That would imply that She-Hulk was actually good. You do not get to choose. It's my show. Often said that Marvel movies all end the same way, following some unwritten rule that you have to throw a bunch of plot. Because it only gets worse as he doubles down and says that, you know, losing 4 million subscribers, that's actually relatively small. And in fact, I think we have pricing elasticity. In other words, 
I think we can take advantage of these gullible fools. Hey look, if they're subscribed to us after the crap we've put out over the last few years, they're definitely going to accept a pay increase. And who wouldn't think you could increase the price for your customers when you're producing such quality content as The Mandalorian? <laughs> If that doesn't make you throw your wallet at the screen, I don't know what will. Let alone The Acolyte, which will be a female-centric show that takes a look at the world and what's going on for all of us right now. With sales pitches like that, just make it 50 bucks a month, I'll continue to pay it. And I think that's why it's so weird to me that analysts believe in Iger's path, or at least according to The Hollywood Reporter, who talk about various different people that maintained their buy rating, while the same website runs different articles going, oh, by the way, Analysts downgrade Disney stock to risky. So please, The Hollywood Reporter, which one is it? At least you can understand when different websites disagree or even different journalists. But this isn't just the same website, but it's written by the same man. <laughs> Albeit this article is done a day later. So maybe as time went on, they looked at more details and realized this is bad. Who knows? Maybe they went on Disney Plus and actually watched some of the shows. As nothing will make you lose faith in Disney faster than that. Because we lost 300,000 subscribers in America and Canada. And this is when they released Peter Pan. A major name, a full movie aimed at kids their target demographic. I mean, this is a movie who rewrote the hero of the piece to the villain and then put Wendy front and center, stripped the hero of all his impressive moments and got Wendy to save him and his useless body instead. No, no, hang on. Don't let go. I mean, what parent wouldn't want their child to be utterly humiliated? in every piece of entertainment they watch on your platform. You have the boy's magic. No, this magic belongs to no boy. Obviously that's how you get pricing elasticity. But don't worry, as subscribers leave Disney in their millions, he didn't just plan to increase prices. Oh no, he's got other things in mind that will definitely help increase that same content value proposition which he says is worth a higher price. Yes, he's going to justify charging people more by actively removing content from the platform. The company is planning to pull content off streaming services and we're going to produce less new content moving forwards. What a great way to justify a price increase by removing the amount of content they can watch and telling them that you're going to be making far less in the future as well. Also, this is a complete U-turn from Bob Iger of the previous CEO who actively worked on increasing the amount of content that was being produced. I think you like to talk about feeding the beast. When you have a streaming service that has the risk of churn, you need to constantly refresh your services with new content. In fact, he said that was vital to make the streaming service a success. What is the rate of replenishment that you need in order not to churn people out? Essentially, we stopped creating new things for way too long. The fourth quarter of this year is where we'll finally reach some level of normalization in terms of new content for each channel. With a churn rate of subscribers, you need new content. If you don't produce anything they want to watch, you, they can just unsubscribe and when you make something new, they can resubscribe again. Because of this, you have to keep making them watch new things. We have the best creative teams. There was a lot of eating. There yeah. was a lot of food. Yeah, yeah. Best brands and franchises. This is the show of legal paperwork. In the world. What you least expect that you're going to want to see is Thor going through a midlife crisis. I kind of assume Dahmer wouldn't be on uh, <laughs> Disney. Huh, okay, cool. Or Squid Games. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. But Disney doesn't want to do that. They're already laying off tons of people and now they want to save costs. Rethinking costs and strategy is looking for a content impairment of 1.5 to 1.8 billion. Yeah, apparently this is a strategic change, which is business terminology for we've made complete and utter crap that no one wants to watch, so we might as well write it off on taxes. It's also handy that this 1.8 billion will get shifted into the third quarter, so it might give our numbers a bit of a boost then. <laughs> oh look, while she didn't specify any specific programming, they did cancel Willow and National Treasure, both IPs that they brought up from the past and then utterly destroyed with various different ideological changes. Congratulations. You're Willow of Good, greatest sorcerer. I'm not actually mediocre at best. Willow of Good here is terrified that one day he'll be discovered as the aging, talentless hack that he really is. In fact, their language, their actions, and everything they do all seems to culminate in one conclusion that the problem is streaming. At no point does it seem to have crossed their tiny little minds that the problem might be them. Now instead, Disney is laying off 7,000 staffers trying to make planned cost savings of 5.5 billion and getting more surgical 
in what we make. As if the idea is that if we just make less stuff, somehow that stuff will be better than if we made more stuff. The whole idea of quantity versus quality isn't actually an iron law. You can have an infinite amount of incredible shows, as long as you have incredible people making all of them. But these people not only have to have talent, but they also can't be ideological hacks. Whereas Disney seems to provide people who don't understand concepts such as heroism or masculinity. Personally, I'd go so far as saying concepts altogether, which is why they're so obsessed with such basic ideas of representation, because they can only see the world through themselves. That's why if they're not in something, it's a massive deal to them, because they are the entire world as far as they're concerned, as they can't actually comprehend ideas or points of view external to themselves. Or their mate Dave. And because of this, because of the people you hire, all of your stuff is crap. So even if you're more surgical, which just means you're gonna make less to save money, it's still going to be made by people who can't write. So we're gonna make less content of the same quality and charge more for it. What could possibly go wrong? And none of this is comprehended by Disney at all. Instead, they say, when you make a lot of content, everything needs to be marketed. You're spending a lot of money marketing things that are not gonna have an impact on the bottom line, except negatively due to marketing costs. In PC gaming, there is Steam. It sells games. Do you wanna know how many games it markets? None of them. You wanna buy a PC game, you go on Steam, and there's banners with various different games you can buy. That's the marketing. Disney Plus has banners on the front page of things to watch. That's the marketing. That doesn't cost them a penny, and if there's stuff on that page all the time whenever you go on the app, you're not going to lose subscribers, which means you're going to grow. People watch the shows, they tell their friends, and as long as people aren't leaving, people are constantly arriving to watch the stuff that their friends love. Good programs market themselves. Disney's problem is they spend a lot on marketing, and it doesn't have any impact on the bottom line because they're awful. So even if you get somebody to watch the first episodes, they then go and tell all of their friends, it's awful, you shouldn't watch this. And so no one actually subscribes. It doesn't matter how much money you spend on marketing when your shows are trash. And yet Iger can't comprehend that. No, our problem is that we're spreading out marketing so thin that actually the problem is we're not marketing specific things enough. And so they think they just needed to learn a lesson. And now they've learned a lot more about it. By changing things like how they market their shows, they'll learn how content behaves and what the customers want. And I actually think that is pretty sneaky because you have the perfect example in Peter Pan. The first trailer came out and everybody hated it. That trailer was custom designed to piss off the population. It had everything which it knew was going to push a button. Are you? Lost boys. Every last one of us. But you're not all boys. So? And the backlash was swift, getting 52,000 upvotes to 605,000 downvotes. And yet they learned from that. The problems that were in the first trailer, the pressure moments that people brought up and said, what are you doing? This is repulsive, made them come out with a second trailer, which just coincidentally took all those moments out and replaced them with more of what the audience wanted, more of Peter Pan being heroic. Of course, then you go and see the movie and it's the same pile of festering trash. It hadn't changed the content, they just learned of a different way to market it. They'd learned what the customers want and how to lean into that with the right marketing, but it didn't change the content. Improving your marketing to the customers by giving them what they want in the marketing, all that is is a bait and switch, so your content never changes. You just convince people to go to it. Because Disney don't think what they're doing is wrong. They're proud of what they're doing. They think that the twisted ideas in this stuff is great. And in fact, the customers are wrong. You need to see this, you need to be convinced. And that if you disagree with what they want, well, you're just another person that needs to watch their shows so they can convince you and change your mind. There's lots of talk about how this is just a new business that we've never been in. We don't understand streaming. Streaming is unique in some way. And we just have to come up with the right strategy to sell this to people. But until you realize that you're the problem, that the people you're hiring are the problem, that the fundamental values and priorities that the people within your company have are wrong, you're going to continue to lose subscribers and lose money. This isn't something that will be fixed by marketing. And the very idea that you think you can solve the problem of subscribers fleeing your platform by increasing subscription fees, lowering your costs, lowering the amount of content you have, and lowering the amount of content you produce is insane. We're gonna charge you more and give you less, all the while learning how to market it to you better. So you think you're getting a better deal, I suppose? It's done, as far as I can tell, because they think this is a problem with streaming, that it's some brand new business model, when really, it's very simple. I've got a product, 
I want you to come and buy it from me. The product has to be good. And yet, your product is let down by the staff that makes it, by the people in your company, by the values that they hold, and by the writers themselves. Writers who can't even comprehend abstract ideas. Everything is about them, their ego, making sure that they're the one in the role. It's a fundamental aspect of a terrible writer. And yet, we want more money, folks. Yes, ChatGPT doesn't have childhood trauma, but if you let her write, she will definitely put her childhood trauma into every single show she writes for. I mean, just look at Gotham Knights. Yes, it's the CW, but that show is summed up by two words. Dad issues. Dad, 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 dad issues. Dad issues. Every, single one, every single character in that show has daddy issues. Why? Because the writers do. That's why they don't value higher principles or ideas and everything is just so basic. It's all about their personal experiences, their problems, seeing themselves on the screen. Maybe it's some aspect of their biology, their identity, how they prefer friction to be implemented. And until Disney grasps this, they will never find a solution. Because you can go and shove as much content into the Disney vault as you want. Try and market stuff to bait and switch people to watch your show as much as you want. That's a very short-term strategy, by the way. And people can blame streaming for it all they want, saying the streaming wars are over. But the problem isn't streaming. The problem is the people making the shows for streaming. And until a company realizes that, until you're not more picky about the shows you make, but the people you hire, it's never going to change and you're never going to realize why it changes because places like Disney need an entire overhaul of the corporate culture. The very fundamental values of the company need to change because not only is the system not based on meritocracy, but the people involved can't actually write anything outside of their sphere of individual experience. And their experience is simply talking to people on Twitter and sitting in a room looking at a phone. These are people born and bred in the Californian victim mindset and so every piece of entertainment has that running through it. It's like the willow liquid evil all over again. It's nourishment. It's the part of himself that he gives to us. And so if you think you can raise the prices off the back of that just to solve all your problems, you've got another thing coming, Disney. Because this won't just be the second quarter of lost subscribers. If you actually want to become a profitable company once again, one that isn't just subsidized by your parks, and with a streaming service that is actually profitable, then you have to change a lot more than just pulling some programs and making less. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.